Welcome to the People of India exhibition here at Cambridge University Library. This exhibition charts the changing visual culture of anthropology in India, beginning in the early 19th century with the East India Company, moving through the British Raj and up to Indian independence in 1947. And the books and images we've got on display here form part of the India Unbox series of events and exhibitions here at Cambridge, celebrating UK India Year of Culture and the 70th anniversary of Indian independence. So we've got some pretty incredible images on display here. Take this one. It was published in 1832 by Henry Harkness, a captain in the Madras army, in a book entitled A Description of a Singular Aboriginal Race Inhabiting the Summit of the Nilgiri Hills. And it's a really good example of early colonial anthropology. The frontispiece you see here depicts the Todas, who are a pastoral hill tribe living in the Nilgiri Hills in southern India. And Harkness was strongly influenced by a kind of romantic Orientalism, one that bolstered the expansion of the British Empire in India during the late 18th and early 19th centuries. So the Todas here appear in a quite weird, highly Europeanized form. They look like they're in some kind of classical or biblical scene even. And Harkness actually argued that the Todas were in fact related to the Romans of antiquity, comparing the Toda shawl to a Roman toga. The suggestion was that the Todas actually had more in common with the British than India's Muslim rulers, the Mughals. That romanticism, though, of the early 19th century was shattered with the outbreak of the Indian Rebellion in 1857. And with it, the colonial state turned to a programme of racial profiling, one that continues to have legacies to this day. In the second half of the 19th century, anthropologists then started placing increasing emphasis on physical measurements as markers of racial difference. So the two photographs you see here were taken in order to calculate the ratio between the length and the breadth of a toda head. And this was known as the cephalic index, a kind of 19th century scientific racism. And you can see that the photographer has even erected this checkered screen in the background for this purpose. And this was the kind of technique that had been widely promoted by evolutionary thinkers like Thomas Henry Huxley back in Britain, who hoped to standardise anthropological photography in the late Victorian era. By the beginning of the 20th century, Indians weren't simply the objects of anthropological study. They were also increasingly taking up anthropology themselves, critiquing the colonial state and building a nationalist movement. Here, Koina Toma tells us more about two incredible Indian anthropologists and the images they produced, Sarat Chandraroy and Veria Elwin. Sir Chandra Roy was a lawyer who turned to anthropology in early 20th century and he worked on tribes in Churanagpur region in central India. Um, he was important because he established uh, Man in India which is a key journal and remains a key journal amongst anthropologists in India at the moment. And also because he was um, uh, crucial for institutionalizing anthropology as a discipline in Indian universities. So in the beginning he kind of sourced his images from missionaries and took people along with him to take photographs but eventually um, I think he turned to photography himself and especially his son started assisting him on his tours into um, the Orao region which was basically the main focus of his work. So eventually we see that he's more interested into documenting things himself or more uh, or directing them himself rather than just sourcing them from different people. Very Elwin was a missionary who went to India in early 20th century and uh, worked with Gandhi for a while. 
and eventually he became interested in the tribes in central India and he went there for humanitarian work but uh, turned to anthropology as part of his larger philanthropic project. He was a key anthropologist in developing the tribal policy of independent India and he was very closely associated with Jawaharlal Nehru. So this particular image is from the 1958 calendar which was uh, made as part of the NEFA project and uh, the calendar was basically a was basically made from drawings which were reproduced from Elvin's photographs themselves because he was very careful that everything had to be accurate and realistic to have any impact on tribal psychology. So a lot of Indian anthropologists use anthropology as, uh, as a form of activism or even as a form of uh, national uh, conception of uh, the Indian society. So in that, it, that way Indian anthropology is important for study, understanding how the global history of anthropology emerges in late 19th and early 20th century.